Hi, I'm going to teach you how to calculate E0, and this is a really, really big thing. Um, I've seen a lot of FRQs, multiple choice questions on this. This is one of the main things that you need to know how to do in electrochemistry. Um, so, this is what you'll see in your textbook. It will say to find the total standard reduction potential for a cell, you take the potential of the cathode minus the potential of the anode. I'll be honest. I found that that really confuses students. So I'm going to reframe that and show you a little bit easier way to do it. It's the same thing. It's just looking at it from a different perspective. Um, so here is uh, what you need to know in order to do this in the easiest way possible. First, when you are adding two half reactions and you're trying to calculate um, the potential of a cell, you have to look up the E values on a table, okay? So either it will be given to you or you have to look them up in a table and you can Google it. You Google standard reduction potential table, okay? And you'll find this list of half reactions with the potentials, the E values next to them. Remember those E values are in volts, the unit is volt. Okay, now for a voltaic cell, I'm gonna underline that in pink. Remember, a voltaic cell is spontaneous. Um, if we're thinking about my little river example, um, here we have water going from the top down to the bottom of the mountain. That happens naturally. That's a potential difference from the top to the bottom of the mountain. That is a voltaic cell. The electrons naturally move because that potential pushes them, okay? So this is spontaneous. This would be a battery, all right? Um, when I'm using my phone, those electrons by themselves move because of a potential difference inside the battery. Um, so if you're doing a voltaic cell, here you have it. You flip the most negative, or you can think the smallest number when you have your two half reactions. And I'll show you how to do that. You look at your two half reactions, whichever one's most negative, flip that reaction, make oxidation. And remember when you flip a half reaction, you change the sign on the E naught. You multiply it by a minus one. Okay, that's where this comes in. So you flip the smallest value, change the sign. And then all you have to do is add the half reactions, add the potentials, boom, you're done. Now, if it's an electrolytic cell, remember this is non-spontaneous. Um, this potential, we have to force the electrons to move. So if I go to my river example again, here's the river up top, the river ends down here. This would be taking the water and making the water go back up the mountain. That is a negative potential, and that's an electrolytic cell right here, where we force the electrons to go against that potential, to go in the opposite direction. This would be like recharging a battery. I have to put energy into that battery to make the electrons go back up the mountain, okay? Um, so in an electrolytic cell, where ultimately it's going to require energy, um, you want the largest negative potential positive, uh, possible, what you do is you take your two half reactions. You find the most positive largest number and you flip that half reaction to make an oxidation, which means you flip the sign on the E value. Then you just add the reaction and add the E values. Now, a little reminder, super important. I'm going to do four examples for you. Um, remember that when you multiply, <coughs> excuse me, when you multiply a half reaction by um, a factor in order to balance electrons gained and lost, do not multiply E is one of the few times that when you multiply the reaction, you don't multiply the corresponding value. And it's because E is a ratio, and so it won't change. Okay, best way to understand this is just do some problems. So I have four problems for you. We're going to do two voltaic. Remember galvanic is the same word as voltaic, just means biggest possible E, uh, or biggest possible positive E value. Um, so you want the largest possible positive E. All right, positive potential. Electrolytic, this is non-spontaneous, and you want the largest possible negative E, all right? Okay, so we're going to take a fluorine and a lithium. I wrote all of these down from a standard reduction potential table, and remember the word reduction, everything in that table is written as reduction, gaining electrons. So I've written it just as you would see it in a table and what you need to do with it. So let's say that we want to make a battery with lithium and fluorine. Um, so I look up my half reactions. Here's fluorine is a positive 2.87 and lithium is a negative 3.045. Now I want a voltaic cell, largest positive E. So what you do is you take the smallest value, the most negative value, and you flip 
that half reaction. So I'm going to flip this half reaction. It's not going to be reduction anymore. It's going to become oxidation. Instead of gaining electrons, it's going to lose electrons. Now, I want to balance this. So I also notice we are going to gain two electrons, which means I have to lose two electrons. So I'm going to multiply this through by a two. So I'm going to write down off to the side what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip this so it becomes oxidation, which means I've got to change that sign and we're going to multiply by a two so I can get two electrons lost. So let's rewrite what we have. I'm going to have my F2 plus 2E yields 2F minus, that's 2.87. Now I'm going to flip this and multiply it by a two. I'll get 2Li yields 2Li plus plus two electrons. I want to get two electrons because when I add this, those electrons have to cancel. Now I flipped it to oxidation, which means this becomes a positive 3.045. Okay, so now all I do is add my two half reactions. So the electrons cancel and we will get F2 plus 2Li yields 2F minus plus 2Li plus. And then the beautiful easy part, add the E values. So 2.87 plus the 3.045 is going to give us, do you know what? I'll, I'll look so I don't make a mistake. E naught equals 5.915 volts. Awesome. That's a pretty good sized battery right there. Um, so when I have my um, fluorine, which is being reduced, gaining electrons, lithium being oxidized is losing electrons. It is going to have a positive standard reduction potential of 5.915 volts. That means this waterfall is high. There's a big potential. There's a big potential of 5.915 volts. That's going to push those electrons and make them move. Okay, so there's your answer. Here's the key, voltaic. So I found the smallest, most negative number, flip that half reaction, change the sign, you just add. Now notice what I did not do. I multiplied this by a two. I did not multiply that by a two. Be so, 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 so careful. Um, you do not multiply the potential. Okay, now let's do another one. We need to get this kind of out of our way here. Let's do another voltaic, voltaic. Here we have it. So I have um, a copper going, two plus going to copper and a zinc two plus going to zinc. Um, this is a really com common electrolytic cell that um, teachers will use as an example. Um, I look at my values from the standard reduction potential. These are both written as gaining electrons. I've got a positive 0.337, a negative 0.763. Remember, voltaic is spontaneous. I need the biggest positive value possible. So you always flip the smallest number, the most negative number. Um, so I'm going to flip this. Now I take just a second to look at the electrons, two electrons, two electrons. We're going to gain two electrons, and when I flip this, we'll lose two electrons. Great, the electrons are balanced. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have the Cu2 plus, plus two electrons, yield Cu. And remember, I'm leaving that because it's the largest, most positive value. Um, and now the zinc, this is going to flip. You're going to have the Zn yields Zn2 plus, plus two electrons. And when I flip this, I change the sign, plus 0.763. That's really what this um, is doing in your book. You multiply it by a negative. If I multiply that by a negative, it becomes from negative 0.763 to a positive. I just think it's so much easier to see it this way. You flip the smallest number, change the sign, add everything up. Okay. So let's add this together. Notice the two electrons are going to cancel. So I have Cu2 plus plus Zn yields uh, Zn2 plus plus Cu. And all we have to do is add this together. So my standard re reduction potential is going to be 1.1 volts positive. Now I want to compare these two. This one up here was 5.9. This is 1.1. Here's the difference in that potential. The fluorine lithium it would be a larger potential, really, really high. Um, if I am doing the 1.1, um, it's going to be a lower potential. Hi, you guys, thanks so much. It's going to be a lower potential. It's about five times less. Wow, that's a big difference. So both spontaneous, 
both voltaic, but this one has a lower potential. It'd be like the mountain is smaller. Okay, now electrolytic. So this is where we're bringing water back up the waterfall, or back up the river. Um, so we're forcing electrons to move back. Um, that is going to be a negative E. So remember the rule on this, you look at your two half reactions, find the most positive, the largest number, and that's the one that you're going to flip. So I notice we've got a 0.771, thank you, and a point, <laughs> a point 0.535, which one's biggest? 0.771. So this right here, we're going to flip it because it's the largest number, change the sign. Okay. And notice I was purposeful in choosing this. Neither were negative, okay? I just wanted you to see, you take the um, most positive, the largest number, and that's the one you flip. Um, okay, so we're going to flip this. It will become Fe plus, oops, excuse me, yields Fe3 plus. Uh, those cute kids that came in, they do my recycling. They are special needs kids. They're beautiful, so sweet. Sorry about that interruption. Um, plus three electrons, and that's going to give me, because I flipped it to oxidation, negative 0.771. This is going to be I2. Oh, do you know what? Sorry. Um, in the interruption, I forgot to look at electrons. Let's look at electrons. I have two right here and three right here. I'm going to flip this. I'm going to lose electrons, but they have to be the same number. So if I have three and two, that means my lowest common number will be six. I'm going to multiply this through by a two to get six electrons. So let's do two, two, and three times two is six. Now on the iodine, I need to get that to a six. So I'm going to multiply this half reaction by three. So we're going to get um, three, because three times two is six, plus six electrons, two times three is six, yields six iodine, two times three is six. Um, and we didn't flip this, still reduction, so it's 0.535. Now again, what did I not do? I didn't multiply those E values by two or by three. I didn't multiply it by the factor because those are ratios, and so they don't change. We don't multiply them by the factor. Okay, pretty easy now. All we have to do is add this together. Notice my six electrons gained cancels the six electrons lost. Um, perfect. Let's go ahead and add it up. 2Fe plus 3I2 yields 2Fe3 plus plus 6I minus. So now when I add those two values together, we are going to get um, an E value of negative 0.236. Negative. So think about this. Wow, that's actually a small potential. Our river's only going to be like this this high. This is like a, a little hill. <laughs> um, top of the river, bottom of the river. But this time, instead of the water going down, the water's going up. The potential is negative. So we're bringing, forcing those electrons to go back up. And it's small. It's a negative 0.236. Okay, now notice this one, you guys right here. We're going to do electrolytic, but I chose the exact same half reactions as this one over here. Um, so here, copper and zinc, I took the most negative number, flipped it, the smallest number, to get the largest possible positive reduction potential. It's done reduction potential. Now over here, I want this to be electrolytic. So I look at my two values and I flip the most positive largest number, which is positive 0.337. So notice here, I flipped the zinc most negative, because it's voltaic, I want to end up with a positive, but here I'm going to flip the copper, the biggest, most positive, because when I end, I want a negative number, the largest neg negative number possible. Uh, so let's do this. I want electrolytic, so I flip the most positive, the largest number. Let's flip this to oxidation. We are going to get, let me scoot this over here. The E was 1.1 volts. Okay, flip this, we're going to get copper plus, oops, sorry, copper yields Cu2 plus plus two electrons. I flip this so it becomes a negative 0.337. And then here, zinc will still be reduction, Zn plus two electrons yields Zn, and that's still 
a negative 0.763. So look at my electrons perfect. We're going to lose two electrons from the copper, gain two electrons from the zinc, add it up. You get Cu plus Zn2 plus uh, yield Cu2 plus plus Zn. Okay, now this is the fascinating part. Let's add the E. E naught equals, prepare yourself, negative 1.1, oops, 1.1 volts. Compare those two numbers. Here, when it's spontaneous, so this would be like a battery, positive 1.1. But here, where it's non-spontaneous, woo, negative 1.1. So think about this. We're going to create a battery with copper and zinc. Here's your river. The potential is this distance, 1.1. And that voltage, the potential is going to push and move the electrons. So let's say it's a battery, all those electrons move. Well, the battery is now dead. So we plug it in, we recharge it. What does it do? Right here, electrolytic. It pushes the electrons back up that potential of 1.1. Is that cool or what? That is cool. Okay, so your two big takeaways. If you're doing a voltaic cell, you find the most negative, smallest number, flip it, add half reactions, add your potentials. If you're doing electrolytic, you're going to find the smallest number, most negative number, um, and that stays the same, okay? So it's really just the opposite. You flip the largest, most positive number. So here, flip the smallest, most negative for voltaic, because it gives you a positive E. Here, you flip the largest, most positive value, because when you flip it, it's going to give you the largest negative E. Spontaneous positive E, non-spontaneous negative E. Okay, there you have it. Good work and good luck with all of your homework. Thanks.